Let us glorify him. Let us magnify him. He's the Lord our God. Just personally, we come together corporately to be able to help each and every one of us. Personally, just tell him, my father and my God, I worship you. I exalt you. I adore you. The Sami says, I will praise you in the midst of the congregation. I worship you. And I bless your holy name. I exalt you. I magnify you. You are my God. You are my shield. You are the glory and the lifter top of my head. I love you, God. I worship you. Say those words out. And let your spirit man hear. Let your inner hear. hear. Let your physical hear. hear. Let your mind hear your spirit talking. Let the angels of God hear. Let God himself hear. Thank you. Let the devil Jesus. and his court hear. Thank you. You know, we rule by our words. Thank you. Thank we express you. our choices, our Thank desires, you. our decisions by our words. So let's say this evening, Lord, you are my choice. You are my choice. My life is unto you. And I bless your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to tell the Lord this evening, Lord, that a conviction will be born in my heart, that the witness of the Holy Spirit will mark my, my, my mind. In the, name the witness of the Holy Ghost that I'm a child of God. The witness of the Holy Ghost that I am standing on the highway of truth. The, that the conviction of the Holy Ghost. You know, it's like when 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 you when you when you uh, uh, I forgotten this word that they do. It's like when, when when you put a mark on something, when, when you like bless something, you know, it, it's there, open, it there, it's there, it cannot be taken away. Father, that the, the life of God, the love of God, Apostle Paul says, I bear in my body the mark of Christ, that my spirit and my mind will receive that, that, uh, that zeal of the Holy Ghost afresh in my heart this day, and I will be convinced. Apostle Paul says, says, I know who I have believed. You know, he said, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being, Lord, Lord, that conviction will be born in our hearts, that we will believe you, even when our mind wants to doubt, that our spirit will rise up, our mind, we will believe, we will know. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Holy Spirit, inspire the truth of God. Let the truth of God come alive unto me again this day. Speak to me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray you will speak to me. You will speak to every one of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, everyone will hear you. People who we hear this word, we hear you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. By the grace of God, I want to welcome every one of us to God's fellowship. I trust. We have had a wonderful week up till today in our various angles. I pray the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Quickly, we're going to continue to wrap up the lesson we started last week on spiritual disciplines 
to maintain our Christian faith. Things we need to do to keep our faith running, to keep it alive in God so that it wouldn't come to a place that we are going to, we will not get to the place that we will not be sure of what we believe, who we believe, and we doubt our faith in God. And he, he, every time when I think about that, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6, say, he that must, can we just turn there, please? If you got your Bible, let's turn to, you will discover that God is a very, very truthful God. God does not assume. God does not project himself to be who he is not. He will not lower his standard for anyone. He will do all in his power to help us to find him, to know him, to believe in him. But he has left that area of him creating us as free moral agents who must choose. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. I'm still using the Passion Translation. And without faith, living within us, it will be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real and that he rewards the faith of those who passionately Seek him. KJV expressed it very, very well. So he that comes to God must firstly believe that he is. That means you will discover every relationship that we will have with God, every enjoyment of God's blessings that we will have will be based on our faith. That agreement and acceptance in your heart that God is. We cannot see him, but he has written down about himself using some fellow human beings. He is still speaking to today to, to write down in the Bible about himself. So I we said it last week that there is the mystery side, the unknown side of God, the unknown side of God. But the one he has revealed unto us in the Bible is for us to be able to believe him. So last week we said, part of the things that will help us to maintain our faith in God is having daily devotion time and continuous 24 hours engagement with God in our hearts. Devotion time of quiet time of praying, of studying the Bible, reflecting on God, reflecting on our personal relationship with him, involving him in our day-to-day -day life. You know, God has not called us to an ambiguous relationship. What you cannot define. He has called us into a sweet communion. And you will see the, the benediction. He said, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. So God already revealed himself to us. I am God, your maker. I, I am showing myself to you as Jesus, me in the flesh, and me as my spirit dwelling within you, communion. So, we learned it last week. We must maintain, cultivate, and maintain a, a grateful heart. We learned that we must also cultivate the mindset of love for God and for fellow human beings. The Christian faith is about faith, is about love. Love started it. Love gives us on the platter of grace, but faith we receive it from God. We also learn that if our faith will remain active in God, if it will be what it's supposed to be, we must be quick to believe God, whatever, 
Don't let us be like Thomas. I was wondering, when Jesus said, Lazarus, our friend, is dead. I, I wouldn't know where in the world Apostle Thomas, the only idea that came into his own mind was, let's go and die with him. Ha. You know, <laughs> again, when Jesus resurrected, he said, until I, I see the hole in his hand. In a way, I was just thinking last week when the pastor was just say, talking about Apostle Thomas. I said, well, that is, in a way, to me, oh, that is Thomas wanting his own personal encounter with God. And you see, believe you me, Jesus eventually came to come and show him, come and see. So you could have done better. Believing what the other apostles has given you. So also, there is the place for every one of us. There is the place for every one of us to still ask for our own personal encounter with the Lord. Things that we assure you. Apostle Paul said that, uh, he, he said, in him, we live, we move, we have our being. And he said, I know whom I believe. So every one of us must get to that level that to, to a high, very high degree, you will be sure of who you believe. You will be able to explain based on the word of God. And I discover that God, as it is good, we can support our evidences with scientific facts, with historical facts, but we must start from the word of God. It's, I was listening to a, a message by a servant of God. He said, he told the Lord, God, you spoke to Moses face to face. I want you to also speak to me face to face. That the Holy Ghost rose up to tell him in his spirit that you don't need me to speak to you again face to face. Everything I spoke to Moses, to Abraham, they are written down in the Bible. Go get them. I don't need to. And incidentally, the other people, these other heroes of faith, they didn't have the Bible. Adam had to relate to God as he found himself. Abraham to relate with all of them. Before God gave the Torah to the, to the children of God, to the children of Israel. So our own to personal conviction, if God wants us to have that personal conviction so that you will know that you are not just you are not just following the people. And it is whatever we are convinced of that we can defend with our lives. Look at uh, Daniel, Mishael, uh, Azariel and these are Abednego and, and the like. They said, even if God, our God, He, we know He can deliver. If He has chosen not to deliver us, we are still not going to bow down. So they were confident, very confident. And you will see it also in Mordecai. Everybody was bowing down. You know, I discovered reading that, that part of Daniel again that. It was not the truth. It wasn't Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that were only in, 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 the, in Babylon in those days. There were other, there were other Jews, probably some other Jews. Probably they, they bowed down and they didn't have to get them. Or maybe because the, the three leaders were the ones that were falsely gotten quickly. You, you understand me? So each one of us, there was nothing. The, the day, assuming, let's give it a, a thought. If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if they weren't convinced about God, at least Daniel wasn't there that day, they would have also quickly bowed and just say, well, we will repent later. For each one of them, they had their conviction. So each one of us, we must have our conviction about God. If you will enjoy your Christian life, if your faith in God will not become a mirage, if you will be able to pass on the touch of faith. So we said we must learn to quickly forgive, to believe God, to repent quickly, <coughs> and to believe. So today we are going to continue 
briefly, if you've got any question, we we can ask, we can raise our hand and, and ask. Then the part of the disciplines that we must maintain, we must daily maintain it, we must constantly maintain it, is being humble enough to learn from God and from others. Being humble enough, we must cultivate that attitude, the mindset of, I do not know it all. No matter how long you have been a Christian, you do not know it all. God still gives new revelations. God and the revelation we have their basis from the word of God. There are times God will lighten up <coughs> a passage of the scripture that we have read over and over. It might be through your son, who is also a fellow Christian. It might be through your spouse. It might be somebody who is who has just given his or her life to Christ today. So if we are going to be able to maintain our faith in God, we must be humble enough to learn, constant learning. Even in life, the only thing that is permanent is change, change, change. We must keep changing, keep changing to become a better version of ourselves in Christ Jesus. And if we are not willing to learn and change, there is no way we can become a better version. Before we know what is happening, the faith will just become like a fable. You know, if you think about it, that the churches that God refers to in Revelation, those were churches in the country of today, Turkey. And Turkey has become uh, what it is today. We, 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 you want to think about it. What happened? This country where we are, if you think about it, that uh, the, the, the founding father of faith brought the gospel from this side of the world. They took the gospel to Africa, to other places, and it is what it is today. We will wonder, and I believe it is because each individual, the church, the church started, they started margin, they keep margin, they were margin and margin with the state until they could, they could no longer even say, this is what we believe. And we, we see it today. Somebody, I was reading an article sometimes ago, and somebody was saying, during COVID time, church was holding maybe some uh, some communion. They were holding a meeting on COVID. I said, is it COVID? You are supposed to be holding a meeting on as a representative of God. Or are you lifting up your hands to God and asking God to, to intervene in this issue? It is possible. Our faith in God must not become mere religion. Our faith in God must be active in the person of God. And it will be as we learn, as we learn from God. And I want us to read Matthew chapter 11 this evening. If you have your Bible, let's open to Matthew chapter 11. These are foundational things, but foundation, we must always visit the foundation of our faith. Then from verse 25, then Jesus exclaimed, Father, thank you for your Lord the supreme ruler over heaven and earth. And you have hidden the great revelation of your authority from those who are proud and think they are wise and unveiled it instead to little children. Yes, Father, you've chosen the gracious plan to extend your kingdom. You have entrusted me with all that you have and all that you have. No one fully and intimately knows the Son except the Father. And no one fully and intimately knows the Father except the Son. But the Son is able to unveil the Father to anyone he chooses. Are you weary, carrying a heavy body? Come to me, I will refresh your life, for I am your horses. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways, and you will discover that I am gentle, humble, easy to please you will find refreshment and rest in me. For all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. 
you know, we may, I think this, we, we, it is easy for us to relate with the words that are used to express this passage of the Bible instead of, for by yoke is easy, you know, because we didn't live in those days. It's, go say, Jesus said, you must learn of me. So if we are going to maintain our faith in God in an active manner, that it will be the real faith, real relationship and communion with God, the supreme law. We must be open to learning, humble to learning, humble to changing, learning about God continuously. And that leads me to the next point to say, there must be the determination in our heart to continually be a disciple, to continually be a disciple of the Lord, remain a disciple and will continue. Jesus said it. He said, if you continue in my work, then are ye my disciples indeed. That means as the disciples of the Lord, we cannot afford to say this part of the Bible. Well, it's not, it, it, I, I'm not sure yet. Though God has given us the, the opportunity, if you are not really very sure, search it out. Pick your Bible, ask questions. But he, the, who is a disciple? A disciple is someone who is a follower of a leader, a master, who commands him and the highest goal in the heart of a disciple is to be exactly like his master. So that means our highest goal is to be exactly like God in the flesh, like Jesus. God came in the flesh to come and show us how to live as human beings. Uh, incidentally, mommy <coughs> was teaching this morning at the headquarters church on the kingdom, the principles, and the standard of the kingdom of God. The, the ultimate goal of God is that we will be able to think, respond to issues, to things, to life, exactly like Jesus responded in the flesh. And when at the rapture, we will become glorified, 100% glorified. So if we are, if our faith will continually be meaningful, you know, if we will not be caught, if we will not allow the sheep of our faith to become shipwreck, if we will not begin to be, be believe, heroes, deceit, knowing fully well that God had already told us in the last days, Antichrist will come, deceivers will come, seducing spirits, you know, we will come, doctrines of the devils, which all of it are full, you know, the whole world is full of doctrines of the devil today. Things that you cannot trace to the Bible. There is absolutely nothing God is going to, the Holy Ghost is going to ask us to do that you cannot trace from the Bible. You, you remember, I remember when we were younger and we had a feet washing service in the church. <coughs> Daddy was saying, when the Holy Ghost highlighted this in his spirit that you should do it for us in the church, he was wondering what happened? What happened? He had to discuss with another servant of God. And I think that man was saying, okay, it's like that in my heart also. The Lord is indicating to me, you know? And that is why we must even be, we must also be accountable, be accountable to fellow Christians. If servants of God who have worked with the Lord for 30, 40, 50 years, Apostle Paul rebuked Apostle Peter when he made mistakes. So he, we cannot live our own Christian life differently. That nobody can rebuke you, nobody can reprove you, Everything you say is right. Your pastor must, must, God Almighty Himself must even walk on egg around you. Before we know what is happening, we will lose our faith. And the scripture says it is not those people who commend themselves that are really commended, except people who God commends. 
like the pastor was telling us, you are not running against any, the race, the Christian race we are running. We are not running against anybody. You are running, I am running against the, the, the eternal me that God knew, that God sent to the earth. You are running against your eternal self. That you are going to stand before the Lord to say, hey, and God is going to give you the picture. This was my intention. Okay, let's now check it. Put it by side by side. So I pray God will help us. So we must be accountable to God. We must be accountable to our fellow Christian. If you are a husband and your wife cannot say, ha, hey, hey, my dear, hey, I noticed that hey, hey, two, three days now, you have not been having your quiet time. If the only thing, hey, if the only thing we talk about as spouses is you're talking about just talking about life blowing up in life, that is not how to maintain our Christian faith. This we must inculcate it to weave, okay, that's the word, weave into the fabrics of our 24 hours life every day. Our Christian faith in God. It is easy to lose faith in this country. The system is so much designed that if you are not intentional about your Christian life, you will not know what to believe again. I remember a servant of God, a renowned servant of God said, the greatest mistake he made in his life was the, mis the decision to let his firstborn child go to a secular university in America. Somebody who loved the Lord who was living for God before he left for university, he went to this secular university and the professors there, they went, they put all of the philosophy. And at the time, I learned, he wrote to his dad and said that I don't even know what I believe again. And that is why we have our choices to make. <clears throat> Would you want to be for God or you want to go with the flow? Because like somebody sang, there is no way as a Christian we can move at the pace with which people who are yet to know the law with the way they are moving. The Bible says, hell is enlarging itself. Hell is enlarging itself. So the devil is walking to the nail. Somebody was discussing by my side today at work that ha, she believes in man-made. She watches man-made. Uh, uh. Somebody was not saying, well, I don't watch man-made. And she said, you know, in Africa, everything is spirit to spirit. I just kept quiet. I didn't say anything because it was, it was not my discussion. Now, I just look at that lady say, my children also watch me. I said, oh, my Lord. You will see, see people in this country. Look at the world that, uh, see, is it J.K. Rowling? The world of Harry Potter that she has created. So many people have been taking on. A couple uh, was reading this week. They wanted Harry Potter themed wedding. After they had it, I learned people started, you know, blasting them over the social media. You, you will want to wonder. And um, in when we begin to do things and double into things here and there, like the pastor said, that was talk with me. The devil hide in logic. He will give you a reasonable, scientific, empirical reason why what is wrong should be wrong. Why what is happening should happen. We are asked. God has contrary opinion. So we have a choice to actually make. Would I stay with God? Will I go with God? Or I want to go with the flow. And we already, if we go with the flow, we know we are, we are not, we can't end it up with God. We can't end it up well. So there must be that determination in our heart to continually be a disciple. Some people may boo us. And Jesus already told us, those who shall live godly, in this life, they shall suffer persecution. It might be a passive <clears throat> persecution. 
And sometimes we might have to, we might have, it might be an aggressive persecution. Whatever it is, we must make up our mind. I have found the truth. I am not going to let it go. God will always supply the grace and the help to us. But the ultimate decision is left in our hands. Would you choose life or death? Would you choose the devil or God? And God is going to honor whatever our choice is. I want us to read John, John chapter 8, in this same version. John chapter 8, from verse 31. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, when you continue to embrace the all that I teach, you prove that you are my true followers. For if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your lives. True freedom is only found in Christ. When we were saying in the morning, God has created eternity in the heart of men. There is that hole that nothing, no achievement. No academic status, no money, no title can fill except God. You know, when shifts are done and people reflect on their on their on their uh, on their life, the people usually find what's the meaning of life? And the simple answer is God is the meaning of life. As many of us that we have given our heart to Jesus, you know there is a satisfaction, there is a deep satisfaction in you, there is a deep hunger and longing in your heart to just know the Lord, to just please him. And when we discover that those are a danger sign, when you discover that you, you, you are developing cold feet to pray, to reading, studying the Bible, to going to church, to relating with children of God, we know that <coughs> the devil is locking in one corner. And the devil we always strike us at our vulnerable moments. And that's why we must keep trusting the grace of God. So keep following. Even when there is no feeling, keep following. When you don't understand, keep following. There's this place in Isaiah. He said, let me find that. If I'm able to quickly find it. He said, if you believe God and you have to walk in darkness, is just continue, commit your life, just commit your life to God who is able to save you. God will not leave us in darkness. There are times that we will, that God carries us. He carries us, he bears, and he has promised us, I am going to carry you to your holy age. I am going to bear you. I have loved you with an everlasting love. He has promised us. And our faith will remain active, vibrant, if we choose to accept what he has said. And another discipline that we have to teach ourselves as individuals to believe is believing and accepting the love of God for us. Believing. And as if you don't believe that God loves you, if you don't believe that God is working for your good, we will worry, we will be anxious. And with a lot of anxiety, if you read Mark chapter four, the parable of the seed and the sower, if our heart is too full of anxieties, of life, of needs, of Ah, what, what I'm going to eat, what I am going to, I also quickly want to have this, want to have that. It will choke the word of God in our heart. And as long as there is no place, when the word of God does not hold water in our heart, in our mind, we will start drifting from the Lord automatically. Apostle Paul said, I am not going to rebuild the things that I have broken down. And that's why as Christians, we cannot afford to keep exposing ourselves to sins, to things, the word of things that even appearances of sin, appearances of evil. Usually as children of God, 
when we see something that is wrong according to the word of God, we, we, we recoil, we want to pull away. But as, as long as we keep exposing, we start tolerating, we start them well, and it's not too bad, it's not too bad. Why, why we will graduate. It will graduate too well, 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 I am enjoying it. And the Bible says it is not only those people who commit sin that we face the judgment of God, but people who are also applauding them. So each one of us should check our life. What is that show you are watching? What is that song you are listening to? Song is so powerful. It will lead us to the source. What is that show? And we are tolerating it. We are tolerating it. Before we know what is happening, we start enjoying. When we start enjoying, before we know what is happening, we will also start engaging. I don't know. If you are bound with any whatever bondage, nobody is here to crucify anybody. Nobody is here to condemn you. Run to the Lord. You are having issue with pornography. Run to the You are having issue with malice, with unforgiveness. You are having issue with bitterness. Run to the Lord. And say, Lord, I am noticing, please help me. If you need to discuss with a fellow believer that you know you trust, you can pray together, that can hold you accountable. Okay, how far have you done? Let's do it. So that we will keep our garment white. We will keep our faith free of contamination. Faith is so, so sensitive, so strong, yet very, very fragile. Faith in God he is so strong. Faith in God has made people to do unthinkable, incredible things. Faith in God has made many people to be tied to a stake and burnt alive. The same faith we have made some people to be tied to chariots and their bodies driven all over the, all over <coughs> the city with their body decaying and they never renounce the Lord. Faith in God has made people to, to face numbers of God that their body was blown to ashes because they know who they believe. So you and I, what are we going to do for the Lord? What are we prepared to suffer because of the name of the Lord? I always think to myself, if Ananias has, uh, if Sapphira had shouted, Ananias, hey, this land we sold, they did not ask us to sell it to the church. Oh. If we know we want to give God one quarter, let's just tell the apostle, it is one quarter we want them to give. And let's give it. Don't let us go and pretend. And that's why as a couple, help yourself to follow the law correctly. You might have some tensions, you might, you, it might mean you having some argument. It might mean your husband not taking you to your, to your favorite, maybe favorite joints where you put. If it is the truth, tell it. Please assume Ananias and Sapphira, they had children. The two of them connived together against the Lord. Look, let's look at Lot and his wife. Although Lot was being grieved. His heart was being green. Why didn't he pack his bag away from Sodom and leave? And say, uh, Uncle Abraham, I'm very sorry I am back. Please tell me we have to go now. I, I feel that's not a lie. You have daughters, you have children. They have become so perverse that uh, your wife had become, only God knows where even Lord got the wife. Maybe it's from Sodom also. Because the angels of God came to your house to say, leave, leave, go to the mountain. He's, he was used to it. Go to the mountain. I said, oh, my Lord, don't let me go to the mountain. It is this place. When we want to do our, you want to do your own thing by yourself. Well, it, will, it will spare you. If we are not teachable, if we are not leadable by God, if you, we always want to manipulate instructions given in church, instructions given by the only, it will spell doom for us. Because God is a commander. As much as he's a father, he is God, is the Lord supreme, he's a commander. It is he that must be obeyed all the time. Uh, look at Lot's life. The other children that got married, <coughs> those who didn't even bother, or that got married or that, that got engaged to other 
made his name. He didn't even bother to leave Sodo. The two daughters that followed him became, they have become so perverse in their mind, they couldn't think of, they didn't know about Abraham. They couldn't think of, ah, dad, please, let's look, look for uncle and go back to him. All they could think about was, let's get our father drunk and ah, how can a daughter, can you imagine? Our lives will not become like that in the name of Jesus. We will not become perverted. Satan will not be able to get us in the name of Jesus and our children. And that's also those of us who are parents. We have to be intentional. Intentional. If, if, if you are a parent, you've got children, you don't pray with them, you don't, you, don't, you don't teach them the word of God. There is no way we will lose those children. We will lose those children. Like I, I usually say, my little girl was alone in the bathroom, alone all by herself. I just asked, dear Lord, thank you. Thank you so much because you are with me. In Jesus' name, amen. I said, so, 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 what are you doing? She said, I am just praying all by herself. And if we don't practice what we are teaching, children will learn by what we, what we practice, not just by what we teach. And you will see the prescription of God. Fathers, mother, when you are in the house, let everyday discussion Take their root from the Bible, goes back to the Bible. That is how God wants us to live our lives. And he gave the practical example to the children of Israel. You write the Bible, write the law, put it on top of your house, as the front light on your high, on your, as you go in the way, as you sit down in the house, explain it to your children. And that's why, as Christians, we cannot, we cannot begin to say, well, I just want to see what they are doing. Movies that will not help us. There's books that will not, there's not read, though, because little contamination, little poison, eventually we have its effect. So we must keep being the disciple of the Lord. We must keep believing the Lord. And I want us to go to First John. <coughs> Let's go to the book of first john we must believe god loves us his trainings his seemingly restrictions they are not grievous his command what god has asked us to do be holy as i am holy they are not grievous day i want to read from verse one delightfully loved friends don't trust you will see the word that god begin to use for us verse four little children you can be certain that you belong to God. So be certain. Get the assurance in your, believe what the word of God says. Little children, you can be certain that you belong to God and have conquered them. For the one who is living in you is far greater <coughs> than the one who is in the world. So when people say, all of things that people do, occultism and occultic practices. They are just innocent uh, themes, innocent book. This is the word of God for it. He said, there is one who is living in you that is far greater than the one who is living in the world. And that means there is someone who is living in Christian, Christians who believe the word of God. And there is someone who is living in the world, the God of this world. Satan, who has taken captive the mind of people who is counterfeiting the things of God? Satan is not an originator of anything. We just corrupt and bring the corrupted version. It will lead people, it will inspire people to use things, technology, and science that God, <coughs> it blessed my heart when I listened to that scientist that said he began, he said he was an atheist, but something began striking him as he was working with proteins. It was a biochemist. He said, uh -uh, that if you see the operation of protein, the way they function at in the in lab at the, at uh, the uh, molecular level, you would know that this is too complex, too organized, too for it to be random. That this is not a random happening. That was where God began to minister to him. So it's the devil that make people, I read a list sometimes. 
NASA scientists who believe in the existence of God and scientists who do not believe in God. And I believe God is going to be touching lives using different people in different sectors of life to reach to people as many as are there to eternal life. And that's why you cannot afford to fail in your own feet. I cannot afford to fail in my, we must be different. If we are going to impact people for God, we must be different in everything. You may sound like a fool sometimes. You may sound like somebody who is, it's good to be current, but to be current in good, good things. He said, they belong to this world and they articulate the spirit of this world and the world listens to them. But we, verse 6, we belong to God and whoever truly knows God listens to us. Those who refuse to listen to us do not believe belong to God. That is how we know the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of deceit. Those who are loved by God, let his love continually pour from you to one another because God is love. Everyone who loves and all and all. Verse 10, this is love. He loved us long before we loved him. It was his love, not us. He proved it by sending his son to be, ple to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sin. If you don't know what to preach to people, give them this first John chapter 4 to read. Let them come face to face. We ourselves, let's go and study this. Let's come face to face what God has said. We cannot help God. We can only represent God. We cannot help God to save people, but we must represent God. We must know what we believe. Let your our, our textbook of life as Christians our textbook of faith is the Bible. I choose to believe it. I choose to live my life by it. That is where our safety lies. Not odd, evil. <coughs> we are safer living by the word of God, taking the word of God, literally believing it, living by its principles, than by new revelations that people, different people brings new revelations these days. I was watching, somebody showed me a clip and they, they laid people down in one church and they were giving them, what were they using? Was it rod or, or belt? They were using to beat them. They wanted to cast out demons. I said, ah, ah. these people, did you see this one in the Bible? Where did Jesus lay anybody down? And he and so many people don't read the Bible. They don't. I discovered that some people even come to discuss things about the Bible that they have not read. They have not read. They don't know what the Word of God says. So if our faith will be active, will be vibrant, will be meaningful, will be sustained in God. That is, I am already ranging up. We must continuously believe and keep believing in the Bible. Let the Bible be your authority. Let the Bible be the final word of God. It is visible. So many people are taking the Bible. They read the Bible. They wanted to look out for things that they can use to criticize the Christian faith, but they eventually met the Lord in the Bible. The Gideon's brother, how did they start? How did their, how did their ministry start? Was it not that I learned when they share with us? I think uh, uh, maybe they put a Bible, probably uh, uh, the only somebody in prison or in an hotel or something. I, I'm not really very sure of the details now, but that they, somebody just found the Bible in, in an odd place and started reading and started reading and that was how he met the Lord. So, and that's why they started that, okay, now let the Bible just be placed anywhere. Let's just get, live your life by the Bible. Don't interpret it by yourself. The one you don't understand, go back to God. The Bible says the Bible has been proven several times. 
The Bible is able to, God is able to, de to defend his word. So let the Bible be your final authority. It is not feelings. It is not one vision. It is not one dream. When you don't have any dream, when you can't hear a voice, I was minded that we we're going to read the, the account of <coughs> Prophet Elijah, but we are not going to read it any longer. The account of Prophet Elijah, after he became so tired after fighting with Jezebel and he ran away when he was discouraged, the Bible says he went, God fed him, he went, he went to a high mountain, the mountain of the Lord. And, you know, loud noise was coming, rock was shattered, but the Lord was not there. Thunder was rolling. The Lord was on there. Until God came with a still small voice. It is not every time that God is going to give us revelation. Like mommy said, as children of God, we are not supposed to live by miracles. We are supposed to live by the principles of the word of God. God already gave us the word. Jesus himself said, in the volume of the book, it is written of me. What is it? That has been, let's go back to the word of God. What is it the word of God has said about every aspect of our life? Let's begin to believe it. Let's begin to practice the one he says we should practice. Let's begin to confess the one we are to confess. Let's begin to repent by the word of God. And we will discover that we will have a sure footing. We will have the conviction, the stability in our heart that every other person may not believe it. But I cite my authority, the word of God. People have come back to give personal testimonies, to give personal revelations, but they are not equal to what the Bible says. You know? And like uh, Parkinet E. Egan said, Jesus said, in, in an open vision, he told him, whatever vision I show you, you must be able to find at least two scriptures, one from the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Whatever we don't find in the Old Testament, check the New Testament. God has said something about it. If we go there with open heart, and that's why the service is, oh no, let my eyes behold wondrous things from your law. So let's befriend our Bible. Live with our, by our Bible. Say, pick your word, your vocabulary from the Bible. For an example, here, our blessed people, when they want to break bad news, they will say, I'm afraid it's not going to be possible. I deliberately told myself, I'm not going to keep saying I'm afraid. Before you know what is happening, fear will get on somebody. I will not rather say I'm afraid. When they want to break bad news, they say, unfortunately, oh, no, there is nothing unfortunate about my life. You know? And we must set those boundaries. Set the boundaries in your heart. Set the boundaries in your home. When, if it is your husband or your wife or your children, maybe mistakenly they just sleep and they say something. If it is not that you are, you are fighting, stand and revert it immediately in the name of Jesus. It will not happen that way. This is what is going to happen. So that we can unless If we are going to be able to maintain our faith in a vibrant, active, meaningful level in God, with God, we must unnest our spirit, unnest our mind, unnest our day-to-day -day life, unnest our lifestyles, unnest our decision-making processes, unnest our choices with the word of God. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And Amen. Amen. If you got any question, have you got any question or is there any explanation that's any addition that someone wants to add? We started the discipline that we must maintain in our personal lives, in our family life, to maintain our Christian faith in God. Any question, any contribution? Please let's just bow down our head before I turn the meeting over to the pastor. Let's just tell the Lord, Father, my faith will not be shipwrecked. 
I am not going to lose my faith in you. Father, you will keep my faith. You, you know, Jesus asked that precarious question. He said, when I come back to the, shall I meet faith on the heart? Look at your life over the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years after you have left, if Jesus tarries. Would you want your children to serve your God? Or would you want the children to have even forgotten about there is any God anywhere? Speak to the Lord. Father, help me help to me. daily keep in union with you. Help me to help daily keep me with to you. Keep right? following you. Help, help me, me. Help to me. keep help allowing me. your word to be the final authority. Make your choice. Lord, <laughs> your word is my final authority, whether I feel like it or not. Your word is my final authority. You have chosen me. And Lord, I've accepted your invitation to walk with you. Lord, help me. You are able. You know, we believe as we go on in our, in our work with God, there are things we believe about God. There are things we must know about God. As you prove, do you know you can prove the word of God for yourself? So begin to pick, <laughs> and it is your personal experience, your experiences of the word of God that, that solidifies your belief of the word of God. So tell God, you are trusting God for something, pick the word of God. You want to handle a situation, pick the word of God. I remember uh, somebody sharing with me, somebody that was called to head the university. He went to pray, Lord, what should I do? And the man of, that man of God came up with God. No, he, he didn't come up. God gave him an idea of let the student, let them choose one academic discipline and let them also choose one. What do they call them now? Let them choose some trade that they can learn the same at the same time and learn together. So if academic is not working, certificate, whatever they have learned with their hand, they'll be able to make good decisions. Let's pray, Lord, help me to just operate my life by my absolute trust and absolute Absolute faith in you by your word. Let your word be my, your word. Help me to hold your word dear to my heart. Help me to, whatever way the Lord has ministered to you, just speak to it. Help me to hold your word very dear to my heart. Your word will be my final authority. Your word will address me. Your word, you will lead me by your word. You will train me. You will keep me. You will help me. You will discover all the traits that academics and the word, the, the word of work is looking for. Truthfulness, integrity, blah, blah. Is it everything from the word of God. Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus. Help me. Help me. Help me. That my faith will be active. My faith will always be actively active. Without contamination. You vibrant in you always. Whether I feel like it or not, I receive you to keep following, to keep changing. Mm-hmm. In the name of Jesus, help me to live my personal life and do my finances, my parenting, my marriage, my job, my everything about me by your word, by plans. Help me in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. And on, and on a final note, I want to encourage those of us who are couples, please share the word of God together. Pray together, even if it is five, ten minutes. Let's cultivate that habit. Let it become a family tradition. And I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Those of us who have children and those of us that we have, when when things are coming, let the children know. Let refer them. Refer them to the word of God. We can do activities around it, here and there. But let it always be from the position of the truth. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word again. Father, I ask that you cause this foundational truth to solidify in our spirits. Amen. Unshakable will remain untouchable. Amen. That even when the wind blows, our structure is solid in you. 
Amen. Help us that our faith will not fail. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, I pray again. Anyone who might be shaky, anyone who might put the devil might be after to save like a wheat, like wheat. I pray in the name of Jesus that your faith will not fail. Amen. And Lord, receive strength in your spirit, receive strength in your inner man, receive strength and receive help from above in the name of Jesus. But the rest of our week can come into your hands with the pray that you cause every single day to be blessed. And bless every single day. And we ask that your strength and your favor and your mercy will avail for us. Thank you for Pastor Pusaya. We receive renewal of strength and insight. We ask that you help her to be stronger and stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you. Um, we are meeting on Saturday and then on Sunday for service, physical service. Lord bless you and I'll be blessed with you in Jesus' name. Just check if she's still using it.